everybody. Welcome back. I could not be any more excited right now. I have with me a guest that I have been dying to talk to for a long time, even before I had a place to talk. I've just wanted to talk to this guy. He is one of the most happy, excited about life people that I've ever met. And when I first heard his actual story of how he became carnivore, I was blown away because his name online is The Thankful Carnivore. Many of you, I'm sure, have seen him before and have seen that name. But this is Brett Lloyd. Hi, Brett. Hey, Kelly. How you doing? It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Thank you. A pleasure to have you. Um, so, Brett. <laughs> we were just now, um, I was doing hair and makeup while we were chatting, me, you, and your lovely wife, and you have, um, you have your own YouTube channel, and she just recently came onto your show. It was an absolute treat to see the two of you together, and it was really fun just now for me to be all curling my hair and talking to her and to you. I've never done that before, but I think it should now be a part of the general prep for the show. Don't you think? I think that should be standard operating procedure for you from now on out. And then not only can you can record your show, but then you can have the before the show show. The pre-show. The pre-show, the warm-up right. show. Like a lot of podcasts, like, you know, big name podcasts will do that. And I, I'm loving your background right now. And someday, if I'm ever the center of someone's universe, that's totally the look I'm going to go for. Is that right there? It's fabulous. I love it. All right, Brett, you're, you're the happiest guy on the planet right now, but I'm going to hush for a minute and let you tell it. How did you get here? <laughs> tell me your story. I, uh, I suffered from chronic depression. I was first diagnosed in 1990. Uh, I got to spend 16 days in a psychiatric hospital. My life had become unmanageable due to, to dep depression. Um, and uh, I'll explain what depression is like for me because it's always very different for people and it's not always the easiest thing to, to describe even now. I was an angry, depressed person. I had an extreme dissatisfaction with life and everything in general. And uh, if I just had this iPhone 7 Plus, my life would be better. Everything would be fixed if I just had this. And then I'd get it, and before I had it an hour, I would find 20 things about it that were wrong with it, and the dissatisfaction would start all over again. Uh, and this angry dissatisfaction set up on top of a well of dark, shadowy misery. Um, I used to describe being depressed was like, uh, imagine if you woke up and had a 50-pound anvil on your head, and it was there on your head all day long, unrelenting every day seven days a week you went to bed with it you woke up with it you woke up in the middle of the night it's right there and uh it turns your thoughts in a way that are never in your favor at least for me they were never in my favor and the most difficult part about it was uh after a time <laughs> I got sicker to the point to where they changed the diagnosis from major depression to major depression with psychotic features. I was on an enormous amount of med medication. Uh, I, had, I had a textbook, classic nervous breakdown due to a familial event I don't discuss in detail. I went for eight weeks without sleeping more than an hour or two a night. Oh. And when you do that, that's when you start hearing the children playing in the yard when you're the only one home. And that's when they change your diagnosis like that. Yeah. Uh, they got me to sleep for a couple of weeks with a drug called Brimeron. And the reason why that's noteworthy is because I think in those two weeks, I gained 25 pounds. Wow. It's, it's a notorious weight gainer med. And then I went another six to eight weeks with only an hour or two of sleep. Mm. And then it got, that's when it got kind of scary because I started hearing kids in the yard a lot when there wasn't anybody home. And uh, my doctor to start throwing meds at me, trying to, you know, finally hit on the drug called trazodone, that let me sleep. I got anxiety jumped into the middle of this, or something terrible, and I got put on Ativan for that. I was on Ativan and trazodone for eight and a half years, wow. for anxiety and insomnia, and I was on more drugs than we have time for me to mention, and I just got bigger and bigger. Finally, let's just Fast forward through the nightmarish part so that we could get to the happy part of the story. But January 2015, I weighed 289 pounds. 
I was my psychiatrist, the last psychiatrist I'll ever see, not named Georgia Eade or Paul Saladino, <laughs> uh, told me in all seriousness that I should seriously consider electroshock therapy and or a long-term hospitalization. Mm. It was really bad. That we we'd gone through all the meds that, that I I mean I tried stuff that the in combinations that when I researched it, it made the hair on the back of my neck stand up because it's just, it's just, it's just they're basically we're throwing stuff up against the wall, seeing if something would stick and maybe we could say this would work. Right. In 2018, I started eating animal source foods only, zero carb only, and I have not looked back since. Ten days into it, Kelly, I woke up with that joint pain for the first time as an adult. I feel so good. <laughs> I'm taking two mile walks in the morning then around 6 a.m. I'm skipping down the sidewalk, giggling like a schoolboy, because nothing hurts. And I can do it. As a 57 year old man. And then I stopped, I'm like, I gotta calm down here. Somebody's gonna look out their window and report some silly psychos laughing going down the street, not acting right. Then 24 days after that, something really beautiful happened. I'm taking a walk and I get emotional. I can't not get emotional about this because it's such a beautiful thing. And it's like a somebody, it's like a switch just got flipped. And all that rage and all that anger and all that darkness and shadowy garbage that had haunted me and prevented me from doing anything right or well or good, it all just went away. It just vanished, and it was replaced by this wave, this waterfall of joy and happiness that has not left me to this day. And that's why I do these talks and interviews, is because people need to know, Kelly, you're not broken. You're not, you didn't get a bad roll of the genetic dice. You were just taught to eat wrong. You're brains inflamed because of the toxins you consume and people need to know that and that's why i'm so thankful for the chance to get to share what happened to me because i have never <laughs> this is the most beautiful memory i'll probably ever have and and i've not had a down day since being around you online a lot, and we run in a lot of the same circles. I, sp I feel like I spend more time with you than I do my mother. But <laughs> I feel like you're always so upbeat and positive. And I didn't even know until not that long ago that mental issues and depression and suicide and medications, I didn't even know that was part of your story. I'm going to pull my phone up, but I promise I'm not Facebooking. I just took some, <laughs> I just took some notes. Um, my first thoughts, I just decided to just, just free, let it out, reasons that I feel like I am happier as a carnivore. And you can kind of listen to this list and nod along or disagree. We'll see what you think. So I don't starve myself. I am truly satisfied because I get real nutrients and real fats that keep me full. I'm not carrying around the 120 pounds of excess weight that used to carry me down. There is not inflammation in my blood because meat is so anti-inflammatory. My blood pressure is lower. I have calmer moods. I'm not craving and addicted to carby, um, carby foods. There's not food addiction in my life anymore where I'm constantly looking for food to solve something. I sleep better. Blood sugar is stable. I have more headspace to think about things other than food. I can go long amounts of time between meals without getting hungry. I don't have to ever worry about gaining weight and I have mental clarity. You mentioned Georgia Eve and I'm going to say to the audience right now, if you have not gone and just searched for Georgia Eve on YouTube, on Google, and listen to anything and everything you can find, you are truly missing out because she is brilliant and i'm going to right now say some things that she said and i'm taking no credit for this because i'm not brilliant i just talk to really brilliant people so she says that animals of course which i know this much i've met some animals they can defend themselves they can run they can bite they you know they've got claws and teeth plants not so much 
So since they can't go anywhere, they have to defend themselves from within. And obviously, like any living organism, they don't want to be destroyed. They don't want to be eaten. So she says that she spent the last several years, she has been talking about the toxins that come from plants. And again, I'm definitely looking at notes that I took while listening to some of her stuff. Um, she says that we do not have the gut health to handle these toxins and that really the mental aspect of why carnivores are in such a better mental place is kind of twofold. We are getting things from meat that we could not have gotten from other places. For example, um, DHA is an omega-3 fat that the body needs and the brain needs to function properly. It is not found at all in plant food. Um, so it says that in a, a vegan person's blood, if they've been vegan any amount of time, they typically have less than 50% of the fatty acids in their blood as someone who has a, even a standard amount of meat in their diet. And those fatty acids can affect well-being. The takeaway is our brain needs what is in meat. Um, so things like serotonin, that and dopamine that can give us such feelings of joy and happiness so very meat based choline an essential nutrient that protects cell health comes from meat so there are a lot of things that we are getting in spades that other people are not getting and if you were particularly struggling let's just say genetically you were inclined to have some to teeter on the edge. You needed every bit of help you could get. And these things, this dopamine and serotonin and choline, the DHA, the omega-3s, you need that. And I am going to go out on a limb and say, we all need that. I need that. <laughs> um, some may have needed it more than others. Uh, but then also she says, the importance is, if you're eating an all meat diet, it's not just what you're getting, it's what you're not getting, which is what you were saying with all of the toxins, um, the anti-nutrients, which actually were preventing, if you were eating ton, you know, plants and potatoes with your meat, you were actually preventing your body and brain from absorbing some of that goodness that you were getting in the meats. Listening to her talk, it made so much sense. Your story, it was like, well, of course he's happier now. He, he's getting absolute brain food, right? I know that personally, I am more happy now, but I know for me, people are like, yeah, but it's probably cause you lost the weight. You obviously don't understand depression if you feel like that's going to, if size six pants or something's gonna cure depression. That's not how that works. Um, I just know that before it was very hard for me to control moods. And now on this diet, it just feels so effortless. I'm not taking any medications. I do know that even with just meat, for those reasons alone, you're getting what your body really needs and you're not using plants that could keep you from utilizing that. Your story just made so much more sense to me after listening to her talk. I want to share something with you that happened later. I took a job, uh, in 2019, early 2019, at a big box department store selling cell phones. And two weeks into that job, my wife and I end up having a disagreement. And I remember thinking at one point, we're spending a lot of energy on this, but I've got some good points to make here. And finally, she just throws up her hands and says, honey, you're not making any sense. You sound just like you did before. Huh. And we were like, I was like, ooh, that's not good. Oh. We got to figure this out. Yeah. And the only thing that was different was the job. And the only thing about the job was I couldn't eat when I was hungry. So I had to give up the job because no job is worth, no amount of money is worth losing my sanity. And I wasn't going to subject my wife to that nightmare again, let alone myself. So meat is not just my food. It is my medicine. Yeah. And if I'm late taking my medicine, bad things start to happen. Those are the only time it's happened is when I was unable to eat when I was hungry. So for you, when people say, you know, if you want to take your carnivore life to a whole new level, 
you should do a lot of intermittent fasting. It's going to really enlighten you. No, right? Absolutely not. And, no. you know, that works for some people, and I understand it. I only recommend that make sure you're fat adapted before you start messing with it because you run the risk of harming yourself. And we don't yeah, it's, want any it's really not for everybody. Exactly. And, and when people are pushing that and saying, in general, that you really will get better results if you fat. I'm telling you, I do not feel better when I go longer without food. Now, am I snacking throughout the day? No. I typically eat two very large meals, which some people would call some fasting between because it is a pretty long amount of time, but I am not hungry. When I start feeling hungry, things do not get better in my life. <laughs> or the people around me <laughs> that's not better and some will say you just have to power through and to which I say okay if it's working for you that is good there there's no diet out there that's worth me powering through hunger every day and I've said this before I could have gotten skinny on any diet if I was starving myself 12 to 18 hours a day right certainly I could have too yeah now, would we have gotten this happiness? No, but I'm going to give up the happiness if you're also now telling me I have to go hungry 12, you know, 16 hours every day. If I'm hungry, I am in it as much for the happiness as I am for the gene size. Eating when I am hungry matters to me. And if it matters to other carnivores, it's part of their happiness. Be happy, right? Exactly, I, I mean, exactly. This is, to me, we focus so much on, well, how's your blood work, right? How's your blood work? How's your blood work? I get asked that all the time. Nobody ever asks me, are you happy? Yes, right? People ask, how much do you weigh? How tall are you? What's your BMI? Are you happy? Because at the end of your life, very little else is going to matter other than how you lived it. And you know, because you were a totally different person before, and it wouldn't have mattered to you if your pants were the same size as they are now. What was happening up here and here wasn't working. Now, you and I are both religious. Christ we are God. believers in Jesus Christ. Yes, we Amen. are. Thank you. I wanted to come out and say that one, make sure we're okay to go there. I am. So, I know that for me, that does definitely play a part in my happiness. But if your entire, if your diet is out of whack, it's like, not, it's very hard for these other things to penetrate, to plant those seeds that can really cause happiness when mentally you don't have the fats and the acids, the amino acids, and just the soil that can allow those things to really grow and I could change all manner of things. I've got a lot of things positive going in my life right now. I love my job. I've got good kids. Y'all have met James. You know, he's wonderful. Everybody likes James. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me too. But you know, if you're, it's hard to appreciate all of those things. If you don't have the, the capacity mentally, if you haven't set the scene with those ingredients, if you will, for what it takes to let that happiness soak in. And now I can fully appreciate my creator. I can fully appreciate my spouse. I can fully appreciate my job. And it's like, now that the body and mind piece is put into where it should be, that's where I feel like, okay, the puzzle comes together and it, it gives you the part that I feel like is highly under discussed which is the topic of today, happiness. And yeah, I think carnivores are flat out happier. Come at me otherwise. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I, in all honesty, no, I, I haven't met an unhappy carnivore yet. I haven't met, I haven't spoken with, and you know, I've, I, I've spoken with Dr. Lisa Wiedemann, you know, your uh, team carnivore friend. And she's as happy as the day is long. No matter what time of the day it is, I'm speaking to her. So it's just the same happy Lisa, great affect. You see the happiness in her eyes. And yes. 
your diet matters and these other things matter too um you know vanessa spina is a happy happy soul judy cho she's coming to my house in march man i love her um carnivore yogi sarah they just spread light into this world i love them i'm and I just want to be around them. I wanted to talk to you because I want to be around the joy that you are putting out into this world. And I'm so grateful that you came here to just talk about meat and happiness. I can't imagine a better topic. I look forward to seeing you on the old internet, spreading your light in the world as well. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. It's been a genuine pleasure, even if I did get tongue tied in places. <laughs> I, I just want to let you and everybody know, no matter how bad or hard things get, never, ever forget, you've always got something to be thankful for. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm thankful for you today. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Kelly. Be well. You too. Bye-bye.